Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to run through how I've got Nina set up. Well, some of it won't apply to you, um, different settings, etc., different cameras, different equipment. Um, but so uh, we take a quick look down the left hand side here. You can see that we have, we start here, general and options. You can see you've got your profiles. Now all this stuff here can change depending upon which profile you have set. And in the first tab under general, you can set your color setup, your astrometry setup, and in general, it's just called default copy for this profile. Language is English. Auto update source is nightly because the Nina devs produce a nightly um, update. And you have directories for the Sky Atlas directory and the Sky Survey Cache directory. Logging level I've got it set at debug and device polling interval set at 0.5. Next up we have the equipment tab here, we're still in options. And you can see uh, this is all basic stuff, you've got the camera. Most of this information you can get from the camera's uh, website. Pixel size is picked up from the actual camera that you have. Telescope, call your telescope what you like. There's the focal length we had to calculate. Focal ratio, settle time after slew. This is your focuser. This is the only things you may have to mess with depending upon your actual focuser. Uh, the weather setup, filter wheel, I don't have one so there's no setup on that. And your guider settings just connect to pH2 and your planetarium connects to, in my case, cart to seal. You've got some options here for other planetarium software. Following on from that, imaging. Save the image as fits. You can save it as XISF as well if you're using PixInsight or TIFF. I use fits. And you can set the image file path. Now this is something that I change each night that I image. So it's just telling me on the 2nd of March, I did more five minute imaging. And that's where I saved the, uh, the images. And all this here is strings that you can build into the image file pattern, which is the header for each of the images that you create. You can do an auto meridian flip. And these image options are determined how you see the image within Nina. It's like a bit of auto stretching goes on. It's kind of similar to uh, PixInsight. And the sequence settings here. Save your sequences here in the default folder. Park mount when the sequence ends. Warm camera when sequence ends. And the close the cover when the sequence ends. I think that's to do, not sure what that's to do with, maybe flip flap. I'm not sure. If you get out of sorts with your actual layout of your imaging, this this layout here, sometimes you can uh, end up in a bit of a mess. Stuff isn't where it should be. You can hit that button there and it will reset the, the layout just here. And the last tab across the top here is where you set your plate solving up. I use ASTAP for everything. But you've got all sorts of features here. ASTAP, or Sky Plate Solver, Plate Solver 2, Local Plate Solver, or Astronomy, or sorry, or Astrometry.net. So you can go use those as your solver. So we'll now go up to the top here and click the equipment icon just here. This is where you have all your equipment set up. Now I use ASCOM to connect nearly everything. So all this automatically connects. So you've got your camera. Click that button there and it connects to the camera. Here's the settings for the camera. Also, here's all the cooler settings. And I want to call the camera because I'm not imaging at the moment. But you just slide that there like that. Target temperature. I normally put this up here. And then you hit that button there and it starts to call the camera. Now here's your camera settings. Now these are not kept across sessions, so you need, if you want to, reset these numbers each time you load Nina. Filter wheel, as I previously said, I don't have one. Don't need to worry about that. Focuser, click connect there, and it connects to the focuser. Rotator, I use manual rotator, which is my hand. 
And what it will do is when it starts to sequence, it will ask if it will ask you to rotate the camera. So I have to pop outside and rotate the camera, come back indoors. Telescope. Ekimod Ascom, HEQ5-6, click connect on that. And there it brings up the connection box. I normally tick unpark there. Just click that button there. What else do we have? Guider. Click PHD to connect. Connects PHD. And I'll hit the weather as well. And that uh, gives me a weather forecast. So that's how my Nina's set up. It's pretty straightforward. And what you do after that is you have obviously got to find an object to, to photograph. And you can either use the Sky Atlas here and find something to, to look at. Or if you already know what you want to look at, you can use your framing uh, button here. So say for example I wanted to image um, M31. Andromeda. Put M31 in there and it gives, tells me it's called the Andromeda Nebula. So I click on that. And you can see here, the first thing you'll see, the first thing I see, is this, this chart here. And it's telling me, really, this time of the year, Andromeda is not the one to be imaging because it's very, very low down. So we can't use that one. So let's try a different one. Let's try M42, the Great Orion Nebula. And you can see it's, well, it's starting to die off a bit this one, this time of the year. It's, uh, it's March now, so it's starting to get lower and lower in the sky. But it, hey, it might, may be possible to, to image this one. So if you want to have a look at it, you can, using a NASA, NASA Sky Survey, you can load the image. Now the important thing to remember here is not to use too big a field of view because otherwise it will take too long to download the image. So we'll put it at about four degrees and click the load image button. So the image eventually loads and this is what you're presented with. Now this white square on your screen is actually my field of view. And this is where it gets really fun because you can actually change this field of view around. So if you look at uh, the RA and the deck down here, you'll see that as I move this box, the RA and the deck is being moved around. So say for example I wanted to do a mosaic on this image. You can see there's supposed to be lots of nebulosity floating around here. So let's say for example we wanted to capture some of that. You can add panels like this. Now you've done, or well, now you've set up to do a four panel mosaic of this object. So that's literally how easy it is. You just add the horizontal or the vertical panels. Let's just go back here to where it was originally set. Using this rotation slider here, I can change the rotation. And we can set that like that. Now this should get pretty much all of it in. What will happen is if I, depending upon how I fitted the camera to the telescope, when we run the sequence, it will actually pop up a box and ask me to rotate the camera X number of degrees so we can get that correct framing on the actual image. It's very, very cool. It's one of the things I love about this software. And when you've actually created um, your frame here, you literally add it as a sequence target, like that, and it's put the sequence ready to, nearly ready to run, just here. Now there is a target one here that's the default one that's, that pops up. I don't know why that's there. I'm not figured out how to get rid of that. But we'll get rid of that, and there's what we were just looking at, the Great Orion Nebula, with that uh, graph again showing us where it is in the sky and some sequence details. So what we do here is we change some settings here. So start guiding will be on. Slew to target, obviously we've got to put that on. Center target and autofocus. 
let's say we want to take uh, 30 subframes and we want to make them 60 seconds long. Change that to 60 there. Filter, we don't have filters, so we can leave that not touched. Binning, we'll leave it one to one. Dither, we can put some dithering on. Dither every uh, three frames, say. Now, this is important. When you set up a new sequence, you need to set the gain in the offset. In my particular camera, I use 10 and 70. Now, what happens when you hit that play button, the start sequence button, it will slow to target. It will center the target, which is your plate solving part. And it will focus. And it will start guiding. And it will run through this sequence. I can't show it in this video because I'm not actually imaging at the moment. It's right pouring down with rain outside, but I am actually connected to everything outside. But the roof is slid over on the observatory. So that's basically how you set up Nina, or how I have Nina set up, and how you run a sequence. You can see here sequence mode is one after the other. So say, for example, you did panels. Let's just uh, do another panel setup. Let's say, what's an interesting one? Let's say, for example, let's, let's just try. We're not going to be able to, obviously, as I showed you, we're not going to be able to do this. But if we try and load the Great Andromeda Nebula, you'll see that with my field of view, we won't get it all in. But So we sh I'll show you how it works with panels when it's put into an actual sequence. Right, so there's Andromeda loaded in. And as you can see, we're not going to see all of it. I mean, you could do that, and it would tell you how to align your camera properly. But if you wanted to do um, a mosaic of Andromeda, play about with the horizontal panels. So we probably had two there. And yeah, six, six panels total. So there will be your setup for Andromeda. And then you add a sequence target again, as we did before. And then if we look at a sequence tab here, which it automatically switches to, you can see it's automatically added those six panels. And then you would just set the each sequence up as we did with the Great Orion Nebula, set each one up for the gain and the offset and whether or not you want things turned on for each one. And then what you do is you save your sequence. Well, you'd actually, what you're doing here is you're actually saving all of that across the top there. So if you wanted to have just Andromeda, those six panels, Save that. Call it something, call it M31. Click save. And now we can go back to that sequence set at any time. You can also load sequence sets as well. So if I was to load, let's say for example, a target that I've been imaging, which is this one here. If I double click that, that puts my sequence back on of an image that, I, that I'm in the process of creating. So I got four out of 50 on it before the clouds came over. And then you just click that button and it carries on from where it was. So fantastic piece of software. And in the next video, I've got um, a clip from my Twitch stream, which shows uh, some of this in action, actually imaging the sky. So look out for that one. And I hope you found this useful. But that's how I set up my Nina and how you do how I do sequence uh, files. Also remember, you can contact the Nina devs in the Discord channel. They're very responsive and very good. Remember, this is free software, and also the source code is also free. If you want to, if you're any good at coding and you want to add to the project, you you can do that. Um, I have my own Discord channel and I have my own Twitch stream. If you want to contact me. Uh, and I'll put the details down in the in the information box below the video. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.